Yay, I think I'm on. Uh, I hope I am. Uh, guys, I really apologise to you uh, for the delay this evening. Uh, we've had all sorts of different technical uh, problems one way or another. But hey, guess what? We're on now uh, and that's great. Uh, I believe tonight uh, is a night of breakthrough. Uh, so welcome this evening. Uh, I uh, Once again, I apologise for the delays. Uh, we're probably sort of 25 minutes overdue, something like that. Uh, and, oh, computer's given me a hard time, all sorts of things. God bless Tabby tonight. Uh, she's been working very hard to try and make this work, but the computer still isn't working. Uh, that's why, if you can see the picture slightly different, uh, I then decided to go onto my iPad. That, again, was giving me a hard time. But, hey, God's got a plan and a purpose tonight. And what I want to talk about for a little while this evening and then pray for a few people is along a similar lines to Sunday night. Divine life brings divine health. There is a new life that God brings to us through Jesus Christ. And that that new life literally comes into us if we allow it to make all things new. And I want to say this to you tonight. Some people, uh, they receive a new life, but they, they don't really, they, they don't understand it's the fullness and newness of life. Uh, literally, new life comes into an individual and brings them into a new life. This is the life of the one who follows Jesus. And, and so if you're on this broadcast tonight and you're saying, Drew, I need a breakthrough, I really encourage you to allow that new life, the life of an overcomer, the life of victory that God will give to any individual if they allow him to come in. So God comes to a person and he reveals his love. He comes to his a person and reveals truth. He reveals to them that he is all powerful, that he is all knowing, that nothing is impossible with God. And that's what a, that's what the Lord does to every to any person. So you may be on here tonight and you may go, well, this doesn't make sense to me. But on the other hand, you may be on here tonight and go. I don't really necessarily understand what this guy's talking about, but I know something is going on. Something is starting to happen. See, I, I pray tonight that the very presence of God would start to hover around you tonight, just as the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the earth at the beginning of, 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 the, of the new, of the creation. And God spoke. And he said, let there be light or light be. I pray tonight that the lights would go on in your life, that you would realize that God is real and that he loves you, that he would reveal that truth to you tonight, that he would reveal his peace to you, that he would reveal his presence, presence to you. He is all knowing. He does exist and he loves you with an everlasting love. He comes to a person and he makes them aware of an opportunity to receive new life, to be brand new. And I believe that there's people under the sound of my voice tonight, that this is your night to say, Do you know, I need, Drew, I need a fresh start. Uh, uh, God, I need a fresh start. I, I, I'm uh, See, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's you. You're in that place tonight. Um, are, are you looking for a new life? Are you looking for a brand new start? See, many people look for a brand new start. Uh, and so what they do is this, that they take up a new hobby. Uh, they, 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 they take up a new career, a new job. Uh, they take up a new sport. Uh, they take up a new friend. Uh, there's something has to be new. I, I know there's a sense of new. They move house. They move nation. Uh, they move church. Uh, they find a new partner. Uh, that they think that, uh, that one of these things, it, or maybe quite a few, is going to solve the problem. Uh, and initially it does. But then guess what? 
the problem reoccurs again. See, we often attempt to solve what is a spiritual problem by natural means. It, it, we, we get a temporary relief, and yet after a period of time, we re-enter the same cycle. We're bored. We're, we're restless. The same set of problems occur. The same things. I'm still having problems with people. That my new partner is still a problem. This is still a problem. My new hobby is not satisfying me. See, the Bible says this. See, if only, if only we would do what, what the word of God says. See, sometimes, uh, and I say this to you, uh, I say this to you tonight. Sometimes God is wanting to move on a person, but instead of them realizing it's spiritual, they think it's natural. So they look for natural things to resolve spiritual problems. And you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. This is what the Bible says. Matthew 6, 33. Uh, and really listen to this tonight, because I believe that there's people on this broadcast. This is your answer. This really is your answer to a brand new life. It says this, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, right standing with God and all things shall be added to you. There's nothing that God puts in the Bible that he's, that he's made impossible for man to do, but you'll need God's help to do it. I don't know whether I've articulated that very well or not, but God wants to help you. When he says, first seek the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you, he wants to empower you to do that. Please understand that. He He wants to send you the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the divine counselor, the divine God, the one that will divinely guide you into that kingdom. What you're looking for is a different kingdom, a different way of life. A new life does not mean ditching all our responsibilities. It means asking God to come into every area of my life, every area that I'm struggling with right now. God, I'm asking you to come in. I'm seeking you, God, but I'm asking you to come in, come into my life. Let, let, there, be, let there be a divine order. God, I need your help. I need your guidance. I need your courage. I need your strength. See, if you mean it, he will. Some people just want to come in and, OK, I'll just have a quick fix. You know, I've got a bit of a problem here. God, if the, you know, if you're not too busy, if there's any chance you could deal with that for me. And then God deals. He, 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 he hears the cry of people's hearts. But then it's like, OK, I don't, I don't know whether I want you touching this and I don't know whether you want you touching that and they wonder why they're going through so many problems listen if you call upon his name tonight if you call upon the name of jesus i believe tonight is a night of salvation but it's also a night of healing it's a night of deliverance it's a night where god wants you as it were to come into a greater dimension of his love a greater dimension of his presence a greater dimension of the revelation of who God really is, because when you find him, you'll actually find yourself. That's what the Bible says. And I, 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 I no question, no question in my mind that it's true, because that's what I've experienced. See, he is love. Uh, he already knows you. He already knows exactly where you are and he knows exactly where you're going. He knows exactly the plan that he has for you, and he wants to enable you and empower you. You see, divine life brings divine health, divine empowerment, which is the Bible calls it grace. It's 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 G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. It, it's a gift for you to enjoy. It's it's to use that gift to live life. God's way. He empowers you to do what he's called you to do. Second Corinthians 5, 17, it says, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation, brand new, absolutely brand spanking new. Old things, it says, have passed away. And then it make, then there's this word, it says, behold. This word behold is look, wake up. 
open your eyes. You, you might say to me, true, open my eyes to what? The truth. The truth is, and this is the next statement it makes, all things have passed away. Or the old, all things have become new. If you're a new creation in Christ, all things have become new. You become new on the inside. You have a new way of looking at things. The world as it was is will look different. Uh, you, a different perspective. Uh, 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 another, a completely different perspective. The Bible says that from that point onwards, we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Another viewpoint. You're not looking at things in the same manner that you did before. All things have become new. You've become new. Guilt and shame has been removed from your life. See, I, I really would encourage you tonight. Uh, maybe you're a Christian on this board, broadcast. I really encourage you. Invite the Lord tonight. God, would you would you allow would you allow my perspective to change to be how do you see this how do you see this situation right now see take another look through a new vision through a new lens uh, your your new ability to see as god sees uh, would you show me a fresh lord how does this thing look to you uh, because God is truth. He sees all things. He knows all things. And he'll reveal to you how he wants you to start looking at life, how he wants you to start looking at people. See, you've been redeemed. That's what the Bible says when you give your life to Christ. You've been forgiven. You've been made new. Your past has, has been paid for. Your past mistakes, your past indiscretions. We've all got them. Whether you're aware of it or not, we've all got them. Uh, see, God delights in pardoning mankind. He is the God of the second chance. He's the God of the third chance. Uh, he He has more. <laughs> he He's made amnesty uh, for you uh, by Jesus paying the price for your wrongs and my wrongs. Uh, and, and honestly, guys, that. Your wrongs and my wrongs are way more than we realize. God is not in imparting your wrongdoing into you. He makes aware of the fact you need forgiveness. Every person on the face of the earth needs forgiveness, whoever they are. And Jesus paid that price on the cross. And he now offers it as a gift, a gift of salvation. That he comes to an individual as I believe that he's coming to you tonight. He's there with you this evening. Uh, and as it were, I implore you tonight. I, I ask you tonight to receive that forgiveness to, tonight, to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Going to church, it, it, it's not about going to church. It's about coming to Jesus and then being part of the family of God. Listen, if it was all about coming to church, uh, it, it, it would be very, very different. Very, very different indeed. It's not. I love church. I'm a church pastor, but it's about coming to Jesus. You can sit in a church all day long and it make very, very little difference to you. But you come to Jesus and then you start going to church. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Go to a church where the, where the spirit of God is moving and your life will be transformed. I know. I know it's happened to me, you see. I can say this with great confidence, uh, that God is still in the church. Well, is he in every church? Uh, no, I don't think he is, quite frankly. Uh, I, I really don't think he is. You'll know if he is. You, you'll know because incredible things start to happen. Lives start to be transformed. People people change. The, 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 uh, uh, <laughs> the bitter, uh, the, the angry suddenly turns into somebody who who supernaturally starts to love people. Uh, they never loved people before. The ones that didn't communicate too much, suddenly they've got an overwhelming love for people. Suddenly people are getting healed. Lives are being transformed. People start to prosper. See, that's what God wants for his church. Listen, when Jesus Christ paid the price, justice had to be met. 
there was justice that has to be met for the wrong things that have been done. And Jesus paid the price for those wrong things. It doesn't matter how many wrong things you've done. Jesus has paid the price for them. But you need to receive the gift of forgiveness, the gift of salvation. And it makes all things new. See, God will come literally on the inside and make all things new. Uh, and it, 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 it gets even better than that. Matthew 8, 17 says he himself took our infirmities uh, and he bore all of our sicknesses. So he wants to heal you and make you whole. He wants to remove sickness from your body, sickness from your mind, sickness from your emotions, addictions to, to things that are destroying you. He wants to break you free from those things tonight. But it takes faith, faith faith to receive the gift of God. Uh, and I'm not going to speak for much longer because I'm going to pray for people. I sense that the presence and the power of God will touch your life tonight significantly, significantly. A gift of grace to live a brand new life. That's what God wants to give you tonight to, so that you can walk in relationship with him. You can talk to him. He can talk to you. You become an overcomer. You become able to walk in victory. Colossians 1.27, it says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that's what God is trying to do. He, 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 he's not just, he, when you become a new creation, he's not just around you. He's actually dwelling in your heart through faith. And therefore, the very core of your being has changed. So as the core of your being it receives more of him. What happens? It starts to change. It's change your soul, change your body. Everything starts to change. With some people, things are instantaneous. Other people, it takes a little bit longer, a little bit longer for them to exercise faith and to really trust God. See, some people, they just want a miracle uh, 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 and that's it. But other people, there's a depth that, that, that God wants to bring into your life, a depth of his love. A depth of belonging. He wants to be your heavenly father. He already is. But like any relationship, you and I have to receive these things. So even bringing life uh, to your mortal body, that's what God wants to do. Romans 8 uh, verse 11 tells us these things. Everything that I'm speaking to you tonight is written in the word of God. See, eternal life starts to dwell in you. The life of the Holy Spirit, revealing Jesus, revealing the Father, but also revealing you and your new identity, your new nature as a child of God, as a son of, or daughter of the Most High God, who will dwell with him eternally, not just for the, just not for the next, now, not just for the now, although now it will start to happen, but actually you start living for him. So God, listen to this. And, and this is the last thing I'm going to say tonight. Uh, I'm going to pray for some people. So if you've got some needs tonight, I want you to start tapping those into the chat. God is holding nothing back from his children. Uh, it is all in the will. You might say, well, what will? Uh, the will uh, is this. The, the will is, is the word of God. It, it's this. It is it is his will. Uh, it's it's a legal document. Uh, it's the will of the one who died. His name is Jesus. The good news is he's risen again and he wants to bring you that new life. But as we come to him, we come to him according to what's in the will. As you come into life, uh, as you come into the life of the new creation, you'll find that your name is then written in the will and you can start to make a claim on that will. Part of that claim is healing and health. But you've got to allow that divine life to flow into you. Listen, it's all about believing. This will if you will believe this will, if you will believe this word, God's power and presence will start to flow into you tonight. Whatever is wrong with you, whatever you need, God wants to meet and supply those needs tonight. 
But the greatest need that you have is to be a child of God. The greatest need that you have is salvation. That is the greatest miracle. I want to pray a very simple prayer tonight with you. That if you will repeat after me and ask the Lord Jesus Christ into, into your life to make you a new creation. I believe if you pray that with sincerity, God says he will do that. He will make you. He will come and he will make his home with you. He will literally come and he will take the junk out and he will put his love, his righteousness, his wholeness within your life. He will give to you the Holy Spirit. So say with me, Father, I come to you tonight. I surrender my life to you. I believe that Jesus, you paid the price for my wrongdoing. I receive tonight your forgiveness. I receive the gift of salvation tonight. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my saviour. I will walk with you, Jesus, all the days of my life. Amen. Father, I pray for those individuals tonight. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch them right now, that your presence and that your power would flood their life. I pray that you would, right now, just break up any stony ground that might be around about their hearts. Lord, give them a brand new heart, a brand new heart. I pray, Father, tonight that healing would start to flow right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Somebody on this broadcast this evening, uh, you've been suffering with neck pain. God is releasing that right now. Even as you move your head from side to side, you'll, you'll go, my goodness, that's completely released. That's completely gone. And the more you move that, the more you move your neck from side to side, that pain is leaving. I break its hold right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God. Oil just flowing right the way down your neck. Healing oil, spiritual oil tonight. Healing oil just flowing down your down your neck. Somebody, the Lord's healing your spine right now. I, I rebuke that trapped nerve in Jesus' name. Somebody, the Lord's healing your shoulder right now. You've had pain in your shoulder. And the power of God is being released right now into your shoulder. Some of you, you may feel a heat. You may feel like a, a, a real heat starting to come in. Others, maybe tingles. Some people, you'll feel nothing. You'll just receive healing in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Thank you, God. Uh, I've just seen Tabby. I don't know whether you guys can see her. Uh, can they see you? No, they can't. OK, you can come on screen if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to come on screen or not bother? They, they can say, hi, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> hi, Pastor. What a powerful word. We knew there was a reason why there were so many obstacles and challenges. <laughs> there were like definitely challenges tonight. Yeah, definitely challenges still. But God is good in it all. Amen. Tabby, have we got any prayer requests? We do. We have a few prayer requests. So um, we have Janet Clark is requesting prayer for Sierra, um, yeah. who's been told that she's got fluid on her brain and would need a few um, few holds um, in her skull to try and help out. Okay. Okay. Well, Father, we pray. Is is that is that Kira? Sierra? Yeah. Kira? Kira. I'm pronouncing okay. it incorrectly. No, that's okay. No problem. Oh, no problem. Hey, listen. Uh God knows who, who needs who needs what here. It just helps us if we've got a name. Uh so Father, we pray for Kira. Tonight we thank you, Lord God, your presence and your power right now. Father, I ask that your hand would go upon Kira tonight. Father, I ask for a miracle this evening. Lord, that all the water, Lord, all that excess fluid that's on her and around her brain, Lord, let it be drained tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for a creative miracle tonight in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. All of the excess fluid, Lord, you know exactly how much fluid Kira needs around about her brain. And so, God, I thank you, Lord, right now. Let there be a drain. Let that 
Let, let that evaporate the exact amount, Lord God, that would keep her safe and make her whole in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father, tonight, Lord God, that this would bring about, Lord, Kira's salvation. Lord, that it would bring about great wholeness and, and great peace into the family, that they would know, Lord God, that you are the God of miracles. Lord God, the God of miracles, there's nothing that is impossible with you. And we believe tonight that the power of God be released upon Kira uh, and, believe, and released upon Janet and all of the family in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. What else have we got? Chris Button is requesting prayer. Um, he had mm -hmm. a little fall and he's hurt his tailbone. Okay, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the power of God to flow into Chris right now in Jesus' name. Chris, put your hand on your on your tailbone. Uh, God, we just thank you, Lord, for the power of God just flowing into Chris right now in Jesus' name. We speak to that bruising right now to be healed and made whole. In Jesus' name, Father, if there's any damage to bones or nerve endings, sinews, tissues, we command them right now to be healed and made whole, to come into line with God's word. We declare and decree that he is a child of God. Now let healing flow right now in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Amen and amen. What else have we got? Um, Silver is requesting prayer. Um, she has a very painful throat infection. Okay. Father, we just thank you for Sylvia. We thank you, Lord, for your presence and your power right now. Sylvia, as you put your hand on your throat, the power of God is going to start, just start to flow right now. We rebuke all infection in Jesus' name. We declare it has absolutely no place in her in Jesus' name. So we command all infection out. All, all, all disease uh, out in Jesus name, all, all infection. I speak to you in Jesus name. I say you get off right now. And I speak to her throat and I thank you, God, tonight that healing virtue just flow into her throat, into the voice box, into every area of her throat in Jesus mighty, mighty name. God, I thank you, Lord, for your presence and your power right now. God, I ask, Lord, for a holy anesthetic right now being released into Sylvia's throat. And I thank you, Lord God, that healing virtue flow right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. Okay, what else have we got? That's all I can see so far. Okay. Um, Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for every single person who is on this broadcast tonight. Lord God, let your power and let your presence just flow into their lives in Jesus name. I pray, Father, for anybody who is listening to this, this broadcast at a later stage. I pray for the same anointing, Lord, that is live here right now. Let that anointing flow, Lord God, as people listen to this broadcast. And I pray, Lord, that they would come to know you. Lord, that they would come into salvation. Listen, guys, if, if, that, if you do and you're listening to this broadcast at the later stage and you pray the prayer of salvation, just inviting Jesus into your life, forsaking an old life and saying, Jesus, I want this new life. Uh, if you do that, I, I really encourage you to email us uh, on connect at coastlands.church. Uh, we want to know. We want to help you. We want to be there for you. The Bible says this. If you confess Jesus as Lord uh, to, to somebody else um, uh, and confess that, and we, we say that, you know, it's just sending us that email uh, and, and speaking over that email. I confess Jesus being Lord, uh, that it says that, that God will conf confess you uh, before the angels. Um, the angels will confess you before God. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very, very spiritually powerful thing uh, that you can do. So I would encourage you to do that. It's like, uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's you standing up and saying, yes, I've given my life to Jesus tonight. 
I'm serious about this. This isn't just a whim. I'm serious about this. I mean business. Because I'll tell you now, God means business. Really, he wants to save you and redeem you. you please understand this tonight. Jesus prayed a prayer, and, and Tabby talked about it a bit um, this morning uh, on our prayer and devotional that you can watch. He prayed this prayer, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. God has already made up his mind about you. But what needs to happen is earth needs to start to agree with heaven. It's the power of agreement. When you and I start to agree what God says over our lives, what happens is the power of God is released. But many people are waiting for God to do something. But actually, God is waiting for you to do something. Uh, he's waiting for you to exercise faith. He's waiting for you to come into agreement. He's waiting for you to receive the gift of grace, to receive that abundance, to receive your healing, to believe that God can heal you. And when we say, I believe, I believe. God, that you can heal me. I believe that it is your will. And you can hear this passion in my voice tonight because faith is passionate. It's not passive. It's not, oh, well, I suppose so. Oh, well, God, if you if you would do. Uh, it's nothing like that at all. Faith is passionate. It wholeheartedly believes that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever ask or ever think. But it's according to the power that is working within you. And faith ignites that power. But take, if you're a believer, you've got a reservoir of power within you. Uh, but many believers, they don't exercise faith. They're expecting God to do it. He's already done it. You've got to, you've got to plug into the supply and you've got to flick the switch on. And you flick the switch on by faith and boom, everything lights up. And you'd be amazed the power of God that can flow into your life, flow into your home, flow into your work life, flow into your business, flow into your relationships, because God wants to do all of these things. But sometimes the obstacle can be us. Well, I'm not sure whether God wants to do it for me. The Bible says this. He's no respecter of persons. If you believe, he'll do it. Oh, I don't know whether God can forgive me. Well, what makes your sin so special? Oh, you don't know how wicked I've been. Listen, Jesus Christ has paid the price for all of it. The question is, would you believe that and would you receive it and allow God to restore your life and make you whole? I'm going to go now. <laughs> I'm, We've I'm got going. some prayer requests. Have we? Great. Good, yes, good, good. we've got some prayer requests. <laughs> <laughs> just as just as they, they 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 were coming in they're coming in um just to add on to that i love i love that because um just to add on to what you said pastor because god when he walked through he asked the children what is it that you need what do you want and he asked them and he said do you believe i can do this so he's testing he's trying to see your faith i know i can do this but do yes. you believe i can do this and by your faith you are being made well so i just wanted to add that Amen. For a reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me go to the prayer request. Um, so we have on YouTube, and um, we've got Stephen with us. Hi, Stephen. We met him on Sunday. He's from the Pillar of Truth Evangelical Minis um, Mission. So we met yep. him on Sunday, um, and he's requesting prayer for his eyes. Let me just make sure I have this. Um, where is he gone? Oh. Oh, look like the message. Okay. Um, the message was there. He was requesting prayer for his eyes. Okay. Yeah. Well, Father, we pray for Stephen tonight. We ask you, Lord God, let the power of God just touch Stephen's life. Father, we ask you tonight, let there be a release of your presence and your power over Stephen's life. We rebuke that detached retina in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, for your presence and your power right now flowing into Stephen in Jesus mighty, mighty name. Lord, anybody else who's struggling with their eyes, just put your hand on your eyes right now. If you're struggling. Father, right now, we thank you for the power of God being released right now. Father, I thank you, Lord God. 
as I stretch out my hand to these people. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are stretching out your hand right now in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke macular degeneration in the name of Jesus. I rebuke those floaters right now in Jesus' name. Every curse that has been upon people's eyes, Father, I ask you to lift the curse right now. Lift the curse right now. I break that curse of blindness in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke glaucoma right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God. Let healing virtue just flow to those individuals in Jesus' mighty name. Heal Stephen, Lord. Let him see. Let him see in a fresh and a new way. In Jesus' name. There's people on this broadcast uh, that God wants to open your spiritual eyes. There's people on this broadcast. There's there's a dormant gift of prophecy uh, on your life. And God wants to activate that tonight in Jesus' name. I feel there's somebody, it's like you've been shut down. You, you've seen some stuff over the years, but you've actually personally shut that gift down. You've gone, this is all too much. And God says to you tonight, he says, no, it's time to activate the gift again. It's time to activate the gift of the seer upon your life. So if that's you, again, uh, just a, a short prayer of repentance. God, forgive me of shutting down that gift of God. Lord, I ask you to reactivate that gift tonight. And let it be for the advancing of your kingdom. Lord, let many, many people come to Christ because of the gift of God that you place within my life. Father, forgive me of the selfishness. Lord, tonight, right now, I thank you, God. Activate the gift of the seer within me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, watch what the Lord is going to do tonight. And from this night onwards, that you will start to see with clarity in the realm of the spirit. God is going to show you the way he sees various different situations. And you're going to know because it's outside your um, it's outside of your vision. It's outside of your ability to see. He's going to show you different things uh, uh, and respond rightly. Yeah, what, what do you mean, Drew? Respond rightly. Ask him, what do you want me to do with this? <laughs> What do you want me to do with this, Lord? Amen. Amen. Anything else? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have. Um, we have Barry. Um, Annette is requesting prayer for Barry and James. They have got debil debilitating chest infections. Okay. Well, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for Barry and James. We thank you for the Shower household tonight. And we ask you, Lord God, let the power of God come right now and invade that household, the very presence and power of God. I declare and decree that the presence and power of God right now is in that household, the presence and power of God to heal. And I activate it right now in Jesus name. And I thank you, Lord, for healing virtue flowing into Barry flowing into James. Let them make a miraculous recovery in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. God, I thank you, Lord. Let the breath of God come to James and to Barry in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We have got Lynn um, Porter is on with us. Um, she's requesting prayer for her mental health. It's, it's really bad right now. Father, right now, we just thank you for Lynn. I declare divine, divine order into Lynn right now, divine order into her thinking, into her emotions in Jesus mighty, mighty name. I bind and rebuke every spirit of strife, confusion and contention in the mighty name of Jesus. Every tormenting spirit, I command you to leave her right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And I thank you, God, for clarity of mind. Father, I, th I speak to the storm right now and I declare peace in Jesus' mighty name. The peace of God that transcends all understanding. Father, I ask that you would invade 
Lynn's mind and her emotions. Lord, with your peace, let your peace right now be activated in her spirit and let it affect her mind, will and emotions. Even let it affect her body right now in the name of Jesus. Lynn, I don't know whether you're a believer or not. Uh, I, I, if you're not, invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. A very simple prayer, a simple prayer. And, th and then after that, the Bible says this, make your prayers known to God. Uh, make your requests known to God. And it says that as, uh, as you make those requests known to him, that the peace of God that transcends all understanding will start to guard your heart and guard your mind. Get your Bible. It's in Philippians chapter four, verse six. Uh, and, and as you do that, See, as we again, I talked about the will tonight. Uh, it's it's part of your inheritance to claim what you need from the will. Uh, and when you claim what you need from the will, then what happens is the power and the presence of God is released into the earthly realm because you've actually tapped into heaven. You've actually activated the will of God, which is that you would have peace. That's the will of God. I can tell you that now. I, 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 I can tell you that now. Uh, it's spiritual peace. And once you get that, it starts to affect your mind and it starts to affect your emotions. It goes on to talk about in verse eight there, meditate on what is good, what is pure and what is excellent in his sight. And as you meditate on that, on good things, not, not, being anxious about what what's going on meditate on good things you watch this is supernatural lynn spend a little bit of time reading god's word meditating philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 8 meditate think on these things meditate and let give your emotions a break give your brain a break as it were and just literally get your heart and meditate on these things that god is good and he loves you with an everlasting love. I feel I'm talking to Lynn, but there's other people tonight. You need to hear these things. These are truths. I'll say it again. We have to come into agreement with as it is in heaven to see as it is in heaven come into the earth. God's already paid the price. He's opening the treasure chest. But some people are just looking at the treasure chest and going, I wish that is mine. Wishing doesn't do it. We're not a wishing kingdom. We're a praying kingdom. <laughs> Amen. It's it's uh, uh, there's a lady called Joyce Mayer and she says, I wish a few more Christians in, instead of get instead of getting a wishbone, they get a backbone. Uh, and sometimes we got to we got to push a little bit and go, man, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to believe this word. And when you do, you watch and see. God will start to, to come in supernatural ways and you'll find all of a sudden uh, it's like, man, I feel peaceful. I've got no reason. Why can't come? I feel peaceful now. It's because God will have his way if you give him an opportunity. But you've got to make opportunity. Amen. Um, what else have we got, Tabby? Amen. That's it. Is it? Yeah. I'm going to go now. We're going out with a song. Uh, guys, thank you so much for your patience tonight. Uh, I do apologize about the technical details, but listen, they haven't stopped God's word moving tonight. They haven't stopped you receiving your healing tonight. They haven't stopped you from getting that breakthrough. Now, walk in the breakthrough, walk in the healing, walk and enjoy because God is good. Amen and amen. I'm going. See you guys. We got a song. He he is good. His goodness is phenomenal in Jesus name. Amen and amen.
Jesus 